Shalom. I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, with Kakradash, and I will honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. I came across this video and it was posted by the beloved elder apostle Taha. And it states, AJ says on Vocab Malone's show that the Israelites never came to America. And I'm sure Vocab Malone had him on his show because he's confederate with this sort of sentiment. But we know every word of Yahweh proves true. Let's go. And in your own time, brothers, I want you to Google search, you know, verses about the scattering. Right. So when you have these sorts of conversations, these scriptures will come to mind if you don't know various scriptures right off the hand, right off the cuff. And also, this is not including the scriptures that are in the Apocrypha too as well. But let's read a couple of them and we will jump right into um, the lesson here. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. And it reads, Moreover, the Lord will scatter you among all peoples from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth. You must comprehend, man. Our Heavenly Father is like any good father. When he tells you he's going to do something, he's going to do it. If you notice, the scripture says, from one end of the earth into the other, America is not excluded. All right? Leviticus chapter 26, verse 33. And it reads, however, I will scatter you among the nations. We're everywhere. We're blended in. We're going to look like the heathen. But when we hear this truth, it ignites us. Right? Our spirit identifies with it. Right? Okay? Psalms chapter 106 verse 27 and and that he would cast their seed amongst the nations right and scatter them in the lands again your spirit if you look like a heathen and your spirit identifies with this truth with this knowledge then more than likely you will, you are Yasha Allah you are princes of the power right you'll come out of Christianity like it states you'll come out of of, 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 of Catholicism you will come out of Islam because right now you are still under the curses you're serving other gods but nevertheless man let me come out of this right because I want to show you more so facts and artifacts right vocab attempted to debunk the Israelites of Israel Hill but there's no debunking the truth and if you're not familiar with this sign or location this is in Virginia right and it reads free blacks of Virginia Pardon me, free blacks of Israel Hill. Let me blow this up just a little bit here, brothers. Bear with me one second. Okay, that'll be fine. Let me get a little closer to the screen. And it reads, Just to the west of Israel Hill, settled in 1810 through 1811 by approximately 90 former enslaved persons who received freedom in 350 acres from Judith Randolph under the will of her husband, Richard Randolph cousin of Thomas Jefferson. These Israelites, see vocab's qualm is that it has Israelites in parentheses. My question is, who has the power to post a sign like this? Certainly not us. We're still under the hand of our oppressor, right? You think they would let a sign like this be posted without taking it down? They did it because it's the truth. As it states in the book of Psalms, the Lord will make their own tongue fall upon themselves. Also too, you got to consider that the, that the other scripture that states the Lord is going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. And this is what it looks like in function and in practice. The Lord poured out his spirit on them, even though they're liars and they're the wicked, to tell the truth at times. And this is what this looks like when they tell the truth. Let me continue. Let me pick it up where I left off at, brothers. These Israelites and other free African-Americans worked as farmers, craft people, and apoxitacs, river boatmen. Some labored alongside whites for equal wages and defended their rights in court. The family of early settler Hercules White bought and sold real estate in Farmville and joined with white citizens to found the town's first Baptist church in 1836. The Baptist church, of course, that's that's one of those false, false gods, false um, um, idols that we are still subject to to this day. Right. Our people love the, the, the Southern Baptist Church. Nevertheless, let's let's carry on there, even though it's a, a, a complete circus. You got to give when you read that, you got to give all praise and glory to Yahweh through his son, Yahweh Shai, because he's woken us up to the truth. We're no longer those dry burn bones. Pardon me. 
Israel Hill remained a vigorous black community until the 20th century. Okay, so that's one location, right? Something else I want to do is show you brothers this piece here, right? Let's go from Virginia. Let's go to Cleveland, Ohio, right? And of course, YouTube under the Fair Use Act, I'm utilizing this video here to potentially edify the flock. More facts and more artifacts, brothers. You have to consider when you listen to this, how did this get here? Let's get right into it. Let me show you one more connection. In 1860, David Wyrick, he's a guy who surveyed the Newark earthworks. He was digging into a mound near those earthworks and he found a wooden coffin made of oak. They opened up the coffin and found a skeleton of a man holding a little box that was about 8.10 inches in size. The box had been cemented shut here. This, by the way, is sitting in Ohio. Well, he opened up the box and he found a little man inside, a little black stone. They took it to scholars and they looked at it. The man seems to be carrying something. And there's writing here. At first, they couldn't recognize. Well, of course, they're not going to recognize it because it's not their language. It's not their culture. It's not their writings. But I want to point something out real quick, brothers, because what should come to mind is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 9. The Lord tells us this about our laws. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. That's what this man pointed to here, right? There's writing here. At first, they couldn't recognize. The writing is, they thought in 1860, some sort of Hebrew. Well, finally, about 20 years later, they found some rabbis living in the area, and the rabbis looked at that, and they could read it. They said it was an old, old kind of block Hebrew, a uh, block Hebrew, and it was a rendition of the Ten Commandments. Now, this is another piece. Block Hebrew. They said they'd never seen anything like it. Mainstream archaeologists at the time called this a hoax. But then in 1900, or just about after 1900, in Israel, they found the same block style Hebrew writing. Mainstream archaeologists still dismissed the findings. They found it in Israel and they found it in Ohio. You, brothers, if you're listening, this man here said they found it in Israel and they found it in Ohio, which further substantiates the scattering, right? Let's continue. But there was another stone that they found that they couldn't argue. This is the Bat Creek Stone. It was found during the course of an official Smithsonian evacuation. The Smithsonian didn't understand the, uh, uh, the meaning of the writing on the stone. They thought it was Cherokee, since it came from Cherokee country. They didn't realize that it's actually Hebrew. They had published this originally upside down. They threw it in a box at the bottom of the Smithsonian, put it in the basement. Many years later, a scholar took it out of the box, looked at it, and went, oh my gosh, it's upside down. It's Phoenician, ancient Hebrew. See, brothers, that's why when you come across guys like Vocab alone and his, his simple followers, that's why you have to know these artifacts because you have to be prepared to give an answer for all that asks about the hope that's in you. And when you have these facts, you couple them with the scriptures. Again, we're just proving Vocab to be in error as he always is. You know, so when you come across a video like this, vocab alone show says, uh, AJ on vocab alone show says that Israelites never came to America. These sort of artifacts should just pop in your mind, right? Let's go from there, right? I want to take you brothers from, let's see, we started in Virginia. So we, we, we put up a fact in Virginia. We went to Ohio. Let me go back here, brothers, before I go forward. I want to take you brothers and show you something else. Bear with me one second, brothers. All right. So what we have here, brothers, is the first African Baptist church in Savannah, Georgia. And again, some of you may be new to this truth, but you have to have these artifacts and these locations, these facts embedded in your mind. So when you come across an individual such as vocab, you know that he's full of folly, but yet he's a necessary evil. And again, YouTube, I'm utilizing this snippet under the Fair Use Act. Listen to what this elder woman has to say about the slaves that were able to write in Hebrew in Paleo Hebrew. But yet, our people were never taught to read and write. But how would they know how to do this? Because we are the chosen people. We are the people of Israel, right? Brought over here as slaves to the Americas. Let's get right into it. This is First African Baptist Church, the oldest black church in North America. 
the building built by slaves. The gentleman that laid the first brick laid the last. The balcony hold pews that actually were built by slaves. They have the oldest information in this building. That information is written in cursive Hebrew writing. Did you hear what she said? That information is written in cursive Hebrew writing. The building was built by who? Slaves. But <laughs> let's continue, brothers. Downstairs, the air holes that the people, when they hid beneath the floors, they were able to use are actually African prayer symbols. This building was built during the night hours. It was also not only used as a place of worship, but it was used as a place to help out on the Underground Railroad. One of the greatest missions I believe ever taken out and carried through was handled beneath the floors of First African Baptist Church. There are many items in here that now stands as proof of the Underground Railroad. In the ceiling of the church is the code that this building is used as a safe place, and that code is Nine Patch. Nine Patch is a quilt symbol that was used during the Underground Railroad to identify safe places. So that Nine Patch was placed right in the, in the ceiling of the First African Baptist Church in plain view. If you're interested in getting a tour of this church, you're welcome to come to First African Baptist on Franklin Square, or you can call 233-6597, and you will be welcome to have a tour. All right, we'll pause it there, but let's get into a few more facts here, brothers, right? Um, something that you may or may not heard of is the 800 stones in South America where they discovered Hebrew writing, right? You couple that information with Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 8. We were commanded to write our laws on stones, right? But it says, write these words on stones. You see, the scriptures come to life. This may, You have to know these things, brothers, right? And of course, South, who's in South America? Israelites. You have Brazil. You have Peru. You have Chile. You have Argentina. You have Colombia. When you look at the 12 Hebrews, the 12 tribes of Israel sign, right? That's, that's the tribe of, of, of Asher, right? That's, that's Natali or Natali, right? That's Manessa and so on and so forth. That's Zebulon down there, man. Let's go from there. Let's get a few more facts and we'll wrap this thing up real quick, right? Another fact is the Los Deca stone. It's, it's discovered, it, it was discovered in Mexico real quick. The Los Lunas Deca stone is a large boulder on the side of Hidden Mountain near Los Lunas, Mexico, right? And what is and what is the lost um pardon me, the lost Luna Deca stone is also referred to as the commandment stone. Right? Let me uh let me come down, brothers. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh da, 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 da. Just, trying, just trying to grab some more information here for you, brothers. To And of course, let me see. Oh, let me block this, brothers. Hold on one second, brothers. All right, brothers, I had to get rid of several. It was an onslaught of, 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 onslaught of um, pop-ups. But nevertheless, <clears throat> and if you notice there at the very top of the screen, it's all spirit, I mean, very un at the top of this article here, it reads, updated, updated 23, November 23rd, 2006, 2016, 1447. And of course, we know the spirit, that's the spiritual number, 144. Right, that, that represents the elect men, 144,000, and seven represents completion. But the article goes on to state the Los Luna Decalogue stone questioning evidence of ancient Hebrews in the America Southwest. Of course, we were there, right? Because remember, Deuteronomy 6 and 9, write these laws on your doorpost, Deuteronomy 11 and 20. Write them on the doorposts of your write them on the doorposts and of your gates. Deuteronomy twenty seven and eight. Write these words on stone. Everywhere we would go, this was part of our custom to carve our laws, our commandments, the name of our power in what? Stone. All right. But again, that's a fact you can look up in your own time too as well. Right? Our people are scattered everywhere, man, even unto the islands. Isaiah chapter eleven, verse eleven. See, this is a future prophecy here. In that day the Lord will reach out his hand a second time to reclaim the surviving remnant of his people. Look at where we are. We're in Assyria. We're in Lower Egypt. 
from Upper Egypt, from Cush, from Elam, and the, from the Babylonia, from Hamath, and from the islands of the Mediterranean. See, when the Lord says we were scattered everywhere in all locations, the Lord meant what he said. So when you come across a video like this from vocab alone, it's folly. But again, he's a necessary evil. Look these facts up on your own time, brothers. Hopefully this was edifying. Shalom.